Hello and welcome back to the Sideburn Hunter. If you haven't already checked it out, go check out my isobutane fuel canister test video. One of the most requested videos from the comments was to do a cold weather test of the canisters that I tried. Two comments kept coming up. One had to do with Coleman being the least reliable in cold weather, i.e. not lighting or sputtering once it does start or starting and then dying, and the other one having to do with partially used canisters, ones where they've been used in cold weather some, some of the lighter distillates have already been burned off, leaving heavier distillates that tend to stay in a liquid form in cold weather. So here's what I'm thinking of doing. I'm going to test these canisters from my freezer at a very cold temperature. We'll start with a fresh canister, and then we'll also burn one down until it's about halfway burned. I'll probably burn it for an hour, and then we'll try again and see if we can light these and see if we can get a long enough burn to get a boil in. Part of me is skeptical about this test for two main reasons. One is I just don't believe people are out in conditions cold enough to cause the kind of problems they're talking about. The second reason is me and my brother were hunting on a day when the high was 10 degrees Fahrenheit and we had zero problems. We did four different burns on a small MSR canister on a jet boil and had no issues whatsoever. It lit fine and we got perfectly fine burns out of it. But let's put these myths to rest. So the bottle is at zero degrees Fahrenheit. Let's see if it lights. Flame controllability is okay. We'll open it all the way up and see if it'll do a boil for us. So we saw the Coleman fuel lit okay. I had some difficulty lighting it, but it did light and the flame was controllable once it was lit. This was down to zero degrees Fahrenheit. However, the boil did take twice as long as I would have expected. Let's take the other bottle out and light it, and we'll let it burn down for an hour, and then we'll put it back in the freezer and try it again. This fresh canister has now been burned down for an hour. There's still plenty of gas left in it, and it only reached 16 or 17 degrees Fahrenheit. It's time to put it back in the freezer, bring it back down to zero degrees Fahrenheit, and see if it'll light again. It's time to test the half-empty Coleman canister after it's been in the freezer. The half-empty Coleman canister took a whopping 8 minutes to bring 16 ounces of water to a boil. I was able to easily light this canister despite the sporting start. So I'm going to stop the video right there. At this point I think I've proven exactly what I wanted to. Even the cheapest fuel canisters can be good down to below zero Fahrenheit and beyond. 
At one point I had a canister running that was at negative five degrees Fahrenheit, and that's a cheap Coleman fuel canister. I just don't believe that people are regularly in conditions that are worse than those. Certainly there are some best practices if you are going to be in weather colder than zero degrees Fahrenheit. One, you might consider choosing a different fuel source. Two, you could certainly use a higher end fuel canister. Um, Primus specifically makes a winter blend of their fuel, which I suspect would perform very well. Three, just a little body heat could certainly heat a canister to the point where it vaporizes fuel well. And four, as somebody mentioned in one of my comment sections, you could simply put a hot hands uh, hand warmer around it for a few minutes, and that'll bring it up to a temperature where it'll combust easily. Now I'm not saying the performance of the Coleman fuel was perfect down at these sort of temperatures. You noticed in both cases the light off was interesting, although it lit easily with the built-in piezoelectric lighter. It should be noted that the boil times were significantly longer, especially in the half-consumed fuel canister. So at some point I would like to loop back to this subject and see just how cold these canisters have to get in order for them to stop functioning. Likely I'll need some dry ice or some other cooling method to get them into the negative 40 degree range. I'd love to hear your comments on this video or other topics so that I should discuss. Please subscribe, like, and until next time, you've been watching The Sideburn Hunter.